What do you think is the most important trait to have while flying a P-47? More than anything, I think you gotta have patience. You know what I don't have? Patience. I'll explain what I mean by that in just a minute, but for now, I want to talk about this super thick, machine gun wielding, turbo supercharger having bore machine. I absolutely love P-47s, at least when we're talking about real life. I think they are actually some of the coolest fighters ever built by the United States. They are thick have a lot of 50 cals, eight of them, and of course, a whole lot of ammo to go with them. This one can carry 3,400 rounds in ammunition split between the eight 50 cals. That's a lot. And what's crazy to me is that there are other P-47s in War Thunder that carry even more ammo. The P-47N, for example, can carry 4,000 rounds, but I will save that one for another video. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable about the engineering of World War II aircraft, However, I do know a little bit about internal combustion engines and their different methods of squeezing out the most power possible. But that's just because of my infatuation with cars. When it comes to the P-47, which is, despite what you were thinking, not a car, there is some fancy turbo slash supercharging action going on inside of this thick ass fuselage. I say turbo slash supercharger because it seems like everyone likes to call it just that, a turbo supercharger. But I'm not so clear as to why or which one it actually is because from my understanding, it's a turbocharger, if my understanding of turbochargers is correct. It's a turbine driven by exhaust gases, which would make it a turbo, right? I'm probably missing something here, but either way, I'll probably be crucified by my comment section, so I'm ready for that. Do whatever y'all want. Anyway, the whole reason the fuselage is as chunky as it is, is because of all of the forced induction components, those being the pipes large enough and strong enough to handle the stresses of a giant turbo supercharger, the accompanying intercooler, and 2,800 horsepower for the M variant. The design of all this stuff is pretty interesting to me, and if you want to learn more about this thing, there are plenty of videos and articles out there to feed your curiosity. Anyway, to my surprise, the P-47 was actually produced in higher numbers than even the United States icon, the P-51 Mustang. Granted, the production numbers were pretty close. The really impressive part about that is that the P-47 was produced only from 1942 to 1945, so in only three years, Republic Aviation built 15,660 of them. That's how it's done in America. Wow, I have a really bad fake country accent for someone who grew up in the South. Okay, enough of the history and technical stuff about the P-47s. Does this thing live up to the hype in War Thunder? Well, frankly, I don't think so. It's cool, yeah, and it's good if you can manage to be the player with the most altitude in the entire match, but you can kind of say that about prop-driven fighters in general in War Thunder. You know that whole trend of just telling people to ha-ha Lamau side climb? When someone says that, this is the plane that kind of pops into my head. It's not like the P-47M specifically even climbs that badly. It's just that most of the planes you see, well climb faster, and also outperform you in a lot of other ways. Especially when you take into consideration the matchmaker. I got far more 6.3 and 6.7 games than anything else in this thing. I ran into a few BIs, and that kinda kills my motivation to play this BR range as if the JU-288 spam wasn't enough. I guess that's what I get though for playing the BI myself. Anyway, the performance of the P-47 is quite a bit better than I expected in a 1v1 dogfight. I had a few fights against BF-109s and FW-190s, both in random battles and in customs, and I found that this thing pretty consistently comes out on top. That air brake surely helps out with sitting behind people. Oh yeah, did I mention this thing gets an air brake? Pretty helpful in fights. Anyway, I know it's not saying much beating FW-190s, but beating 109s, that actually kind of surprised me a bit. Full transparency though, I haven't played any of the later BF-109s in a very long time. The only ones I've played recently are the E7, U2, and the Japanese E7, which until very recently were stomping 2.3. It was really fun. Okay, a few minutes ago I talked about how this plane requires a bit of patience. Let me explain why. In order to do well in the P-47M, you have to have a lot of altitude. What do you do to get altitude? Well, you climb. But as I mentioned a second ago, a lot of planes you're gonna face are going to climb faster than you, so there are gonna be people higher than you if you climb directly at the enemy team. Now maybe if you were going against only Germany every single game and you'd just be fighting BF-109s and FW-190s, this wouldn't be as big of an issue, but unfortunately that's not the case. A lot of times you are going to be facing teams full of planes that are far more maneuverable than you. So what do you do about this? Well, you kind of hold back a minute. You don't immediately climb towards the enemy team. You climb off to the side a little bit. This doesn't mean climb directly like 90 degrees from the other team. You just go off to the side just 
just a smidge. This way, if you want to, you can still climb higher and not really have to worry about a lot of other people coming right at you, while also being able to turn in and help out your team if you see the enemy team starting to dive. This is where that patience comes in. You want to be the highest player in the match if you want to really be able to do well or carry if you need to. Although full transparency, I did not play this plane very much and I didn't really get any crazy good games. My team would either completely steamroll and I would be trying to compete to just get one or two kills, or my team would get completely steamrolled and it would happen so early in the match that I'm not even at like 5k yet and uh, they're all already flying towards me. Of course, these situations could be avoided altogether by not playing this battle rating range. It is still plagued by JU-288s. I got pretty sick of it pretty quickly. So therefore, that's all I really have to say about the P-47M. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Peace. It's all right. Just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I win now. <laughs>